The teachings of John Calvin have been incredibly influential within many professing Christian denominations, even up to this day. While there are many aspects to consider when talking about the contributions Calvin made, his teaching of predestination is heretical despite what his followers choose to believe. See what I did there? <laughs> In understanding the doctrine of predestination, we must look at the five points of Calvinism which are demonstrated in the acronym TULIP, which is T for total depravity, meaning you are uncontrollably sinful, U for unconditional election, meaning you were forced to have God's salvation without any consent given, L for limited atonement, meaning Christ died for a specific number of pre-selected people pre-selecting the others to damnation because there's not enough salvation to go around? I for irresistible grace, meaning you couldn't resist God's movement into your life as they believe that you were indwelt with the Holy Spirit before you even believed, and P representing perseverance of the saints, that the body of Christ will persevere which is the most true despite the fact that the other four points are extreme misrepresentations. Now that we have gone over the basics of their doctrine, let's point out some glaring issues this philosophy would need to answer, primarily the dilemma of sin. Now here are some questions. If man has no free will, what causes man to sin? If it is a matter of total depravity that a person keeps sinning without any choice, how is a person to be held accountable for their sin if there is absolutely no choice in the matter? It would be a false verdict. If God is the main factor that causes you to accept him, then would it also be his choice for someone else not to accept him and to keep them in sin? This would mean an elect of salvation and an elect of reprobation, which in order to teach this, they have to take Romans 9 verse 22 completely out of context, as this is about God's plan for the seed of Abraham, not his plan for salvation freely offered to everyone. If there is no choice when it comes to getting saved, and then you do, which doesn't make sense if you were supposedly saved before the world began, and then you act against what the Bible says, is your total depravity, which is no will of your own, winning against God's irresistible grace, which is supposed to be the all-dominant will that dictates everything about everything, including you. This problem arises in part to using terminology that is not found anywhere in the Bible, even though the term free will is, and relying on man's thoughts rather than the words of God. As Colossians 2 verse 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Now that we've established the problem, Let's read a passage from James. James 1 verses 13 to 15. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished, bringeth forth death. If God does not tempt anyone, whose will is it? If it's not his will that a person is being tempted, it would be another will. We are also drawn away by our own lusts, which brings a sin when it is conceived. And this is our fallen will that gets us into trouble, has us act against God's will and for those who are lost, their continuation in rejecting God will even lead to their own damnation. The answer is that God, while being omnipotent, 
does not indicate every mundane action of your life, as he gives you the free will to love him and accept him. Take this passage for consideration. 1 Timothy 2 verses 3 to 6 For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved, and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. It is the will of God, because of the price he paid on the cross, that a broken and contrite sinner can be saved, even though there are those who reject him. God does not make a person accept him the same way he doesn't make a person sin or reject him. The gift of salvation is offered, but not always accepted. Ezekiel 33 verse 11 Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel?